Well, we the North. This is the division the that all the Canadians have been sticking around for. This is the like, I don't know. It feels like some. It honestly kind of has a little bit of like an Olympic feel to it to me. That all it these does, Canadian actually. cities are just gonna be going at it all, all season long. And it's it's kind of exciting to see a lot of. I'm gonna see a lot of Austin Matthews. I'm gonna see a lot of McDavid. I'm gonna see all this up and coming Ottawa team that has a little bit of excitement to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not too keen on Montreal, but they always have a huge part or cornerstone in the history of the the league. So that that's exciting for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I switched up a little bit of my predictions and to the detriment of the Calgary fans that watch this. And know that I get them wrong every time. So I made one little flip from my uh, what I sent you. So yeah. yeah. So do we agree on number one? We do, but I'm not sold. I'll be honest. Really? Yeah. I think anyone that doesn't have them and isn't believing on them is crazy. And I'm not trying to you know pass the juice around or anything like that. But like, I I'm I'm a big believer that last year the Leafs were I wouldn't say necessarily an unlucky team. But they didn't have they had a lot of tough bounces and like there was a lot of ways they found to lose that are not normal ways to lose. And a it lot was of a little those... bit of a circus around Babcock or yeah. Steve. It was a l- all that. Yeah. They lost Morgan Riley, they lost Jake Muzzin, they lost like their entire decor. Freddie didn't have a great year, but he played okay, but you know, he didn't have defense in front of him. So you can't really hold that against him either. So you gotta think better D, deeper D, stronger D, more physical D more penalty killing D, more D that will protect and stand up for Freddie. So Freddie doesn't have to like, I don't know how many games you watched to the Leafs last year, but I got annoyed and I get annoyed when goalies get run all the time. Cause I think it's unfair because then yeah. now you're making a goalie put his head in his neck in the line of trusting that somebody is going to stop going Mach one and not break yeah. his neck or jar his neck and give him you know, sustaining long-term injuries. So like, I think that that's going to go a long way for the Leafs. I think that there's a, um, we talk about regression back to the norm. I think that there's going to be the other way for the Leafs. I think that there was probably 10 or 12 points on the board last year that should have been theirs that weren't there yeah. for stupid reasons that have now been fixed in theory. So I think that they're actually a better team on paper than they were last year. And on top of that, I think a lot of their competitors are actually worse than they were on paper last year. So I think if you add six or eight points for the Leafs and you take away you know, some points of their opponents, I think it adds both ways and makes them an even better team. Yeah, and I would rank the Leafs as potentially one of the biggest uh, benefactors of these new divisions. Yeah. They, yeah. They're they not going to see Boston the whole season. Yeah. Unless but who knows? Maybe this would be the year they own them. Exactly. But they're not going to just... It's one of those things in your head. They're not going to see Tampa. They're not going to see all the tough teams. They're not going to see any of the Metro. Mm-hmm. Like those are, yep. those are tough games to play all the time. They're playing Canada's team. And last year, if we looked at win percentage by last year of all the divisions, this one is the weakest. Yeah, but there's a different vibe playing in this division, and I think it shows that. By looking at some of these guys who signed one-year deals, these Canadian boys who signed one-year deals on Canadian teams, because they know they want they want a piece of this pie, they want to be in this battle, regardless of what, like where they are. Like I know yeah. Corey Perry, for example, I know he wanted to be in Toronto or he wanted to be in um, out west, uh, like on um, Edmonton or something. Um, but he had other options and stuff in the Metro and the or the Central, whatever it's called. Um, but he chose. East because he wanted to be in the North Division, right? He wanted to say, "I got to play in those games" because he's a good old very fashioned that Canadian boy. This division, at the end of the day, is going to be get the spotlight because of how Canada treats the NHL. Like, if you want to, we also have broadcasting, them. Canadian broadcasting, so it's going to be exactly. No, I know it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. So, like, but yeah. like, this is a chance for players to shine and kind of create some stardom around them in that yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. One of the articles I was reading this morning is uh, this division will make Matthew Kachuk a household name. And I'm like, if you're a hockey fan, he already has a household name. But for the people who are like, oh, we see him once a year and, you know, he's a goof. He just takes too many penalties. No. Yeah, some games he does, but other games he can own you. So, like, 
I mean, people are going to be like, damn, this guy's one of those like six guys in the league that can still play this style, right? Yep. So For it's sure. funny yeah. that his brother's the other one. Like, <laughs> that's going to be fun to watch. Like, I'll watch Ottawa versus um, Calgary. Calgary to watch the two brothers play. Why yeah. not? They're going to play what? Fun what, game. what is it? They play 10 games against each team, too? Like Nine it's... and 10 versus everyone, I think it is. Yeah. Loving it. All right. This is and not... like, it's going to be AHL. It's going to be like back to back or two and three or like three and four nights. Maybe not the same opponents, but you're going to be, it's not going to be Montreal, Edmonton, Vancouver, Ottawa. It's going to be, you know, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, maybe Winnipeg on the way home and then mm-hmm. whatever, if they're playing in Canada. Yeah. We don't even know that part yet. Right. Yeah. I think, but, uh, uh, so go ahead. What were you going to say? I was just going to say, so so Toronto Tier 1, we said their own, t- own tier, or do you have somebody in the same tier? Uh, you've, all right, you've convinced me I'll give them their own <laughs> tier. I, I'm, like, on the fence, but then this next tier, I think, I don't even know. Like, part of me feels like this, yeah, this next tier is probably all the same. I got Vancouver as my number two. Um, I've been drinking a lot of the Kool-Aid. I got Edmonton, number three. And then I moved Calgary up into number four. So that's, that's where I, and I, I have those three kind of in the same tier. And I have the next three in their own separate tier. And maybe even Ottawa on a tier of its own at the bottom. Okay. See, so like, I when I go through the tiers, I always go A, B, C, D, and then F, and then, like, I skip E. But F are the teams that are just, like, off the map for me. Like, they, not that they shouldn't bother playing, but, like, you might as well not play. Uh, and I only had a couple of those teams. Ottawa, for me, is not nowhere close to that division or that tier. Yeah. I had them in the D tier, so, like, the lowest possible before that. But that's for me is still teams that are still competitive, but either are on the downswing that are about to fall down into that F tier, or the teams that are rising up and on their are their way to a yeah, higher they're tier. They're rising up for sure. Oh, absolutely. Like they could even rise to maybe tier C. Like I don't think Ottawa's gonna give up any easy nights. Nope. I don't love their goaltending. Um but they're just a team like what we we're talking about Detroit earlier, that's just a bunch of people that want to prove people wrong that are going to work hard every night some younger talent some physical talent some talent like talent talent like they've got some talented young players that are going to be yeah and that's how what i would give them the edge on detroit like detroit they have those guys in positions Mm -hmm. right now yeah they had for sure yeah 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 no and i had them in the same division like for me i had arizona anaheim chicago and new jersey in that f tier i was referring to and Who's then in that next Chicago? year, Chicago, Arizona, Jersey? okay, Anaheim, Chicago, okay. and New Jersey. And then that next year up is Ottawa, LA, Minnesota, San Jose, Carolina, Detroit, and Pittsburgh. Okay, okay. But yeah, so like I, I struggled with this division. I, I do believe Montreal is going to finish second. I believe they're the second best team on paper. I believe that they have a lot of pieces people are just ignoring. Possible. Like I'm not, I'm not a Drew N fan. I'm not. I'm just simply not. I don't think he's a great player, mm-hmm. but he's absolutely an NHL hockey player who can put up some points for you, especially if you can put him on the second or third pair uh, or third line, and he can eat up other teams' secondary and 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 yeah. complementary lines instead of primary lines. And I think if you put him on your primary lines, you're just setting him up for failure. So like, I think that Domi overshadowed him a lot too. Um, so I think that now that he is gone. I think that he's going to have a better opportunity to kind of just do his thing. Um, but a guy that a lot of people are forgetting about and not talking about is Noah Juleson. Uh He's a defenseman. Okay. He came up a couple of years ago and he was a monster for them. He ate a ton of minutes. He played so good. Like he, he was almost like a Yossi or like a, a Brodeen, just one of those kind of like really good hockey players that isn't, doesn't really excel at one thing, but just plays everything kind of really well. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I, I have a good feeling about him. Um, not top pair, but again, in the bottom pair. And then you've got that, um, crap, I'm forgetting his name right now. The Russian kid. Um, Kokonemi? Defenseman. Uh, no. Uh, 
Uh, Romanov. Romanov, yeah. Uh, Alexander Romanov, uh, who is not supposed to be a big uh, offensive guy, but he likes to blast the puck, and he's got a really good shot that gets through traffic, and he loves to throw open hits. Um, so I have a feeling he'll be placed with Weber, which okay. then you can put Edmondson with Jolson, which leaves them with, uh, I forget off the top of my head, but it's like another really strong third pairing. And then they've also got another good almost fourth pairing. And then they've got Price and Allen, which I think could be the best tandem in the league, or at least top five in the league. Um, okay. And then their forwards, I think that they have three, maybe four lines that can score. Like, yeah, they'll be hot and cold. If they're all cold at the same time, they're going to really struggle to score goals. But I have to think that at least one of the lines will be clicking. So they'll score two or three goals every game. I don't have a – like, I don't think their scoring will be their issue anymore. Uh-huh. And keeping pucks out of their net never was an issue. So I just think that they're very much in the mold of, like, an um, an Islanders or a Predators or a Dallas or, like, a, a St. Louis where it's just, like, depth – no weaknesses, strong team game. Everybody plays together. And on top of that, I have a bet with Nick, so I have to really uh, okay. go with well, Now, well, that, now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of it all. <laughs> it's funny because I made that bet earlier, and they've slowly added more and more, and I've heard that Jolson's coming back because Jolson had an injury. I think it was concussion issues, mm-hmm. um, but he basically missed all of last year. That's why people yeah, are overlooking him. I don't see him on him. the projected lineup exactly so people are like nobody's giving him any respect but he already for one full season ate a ton of minutes for them so like he's healthy i gotta think with better supporting cast he's going to be in the lineup or at least pushing for a spot in the lineup which is making somebody else play a better their game right Mm. so in one way or another it's going to make their depth on defense which has kind of been their weakness and been putting the stress on their goalies well they've got better goalie tandem and they got better defense and like, yeah, their scoring is not bad, amazing. Yeah, their centers aren't amazing. But like, if you have four lines that can play at any moment, you just ride the hot hand and hope that one of the guy, one of the lines is running hot at least at all times, or you try to make the best two super lines you can. If Josh Anderson is healthy, you put him on one line and Gallagher on the other, and you know it's not going to hurt you, right? So, I just I really like how they're built. You're making for the type of point season. Here. It's, I, I, the it's, way I look at them. They feel like Vancouver was last year, maybe the year before, just about mm-hmm. to, like they need some time to work with all these players, their their stars to get that boost. But maybe I'm discounting it. Like Pedersen had his breakout year, second year, Larry. So it's possible Suzuki and those guys step up this year to have their amazing year. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm discounting some of the depth they've added here because like Toffoli's a pretty big ad just as a solid solid mm-hmm. winger. Their goalie is definitely, there's no question about Price and his capabilities back there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe so I think kinda... that Price is going to be fresher. And I think that Price is like, I think Price has put a lot of his effort the last couple of years into, you know, making sure he lunges for every attempt because he knows that one goal by him could be the difference of the game. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of times at the same time saying that, he understands that, yes, I want to lunge for that. But I know if I lunge for this one, I'm going to maybe tear my groin. And if I'm out, I, we have to wave the white flag. So, like, I feel there's part of his game where over the last couple of years, he's became more and more reserved mm-hmm. because he's their star, because he's the guy he understands he's got to be in the lineup. And especially against a league that's trending to more towards what less, more away from one starting goalie, I think that basically they're going to say, you know, when you're in, we expect you to go all out. And then when you're out, you're not coming in. Uh-huh. Whether we lose 9 nothing, 15 nothing, that game is your night off. That's your night to rest, recover, and you're back in the next game. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of that. That sounds good. And to kind of talk on what we've talked about in last season and stuff, it looks like Montreal's doing what they need to do to try to keep him around. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we talked about that he might demand a trade, and if they didn't, like, turn this ship around it looks like they're trying they're putting in a valley yeah effort. i didn't think they were going to be able to do it because i didn't i don't believe that you can not rebuild without getting top picks properly and be sustainably good but i also always thought that they only had one release valve ever and that was seattle because i felt like if price was ever going to go anywhere else it was going to go to the west coast yeah and i didn't think he was going to be in california so what other teams are in the west coast 
I don't think he'd play in Vancouver, but isn't he from BC? I believe he's from BC. I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure he's from BC or just outside of BC. So like Seattle would be pretty close. And with them expansion, they have the money to bring on a guy. Like it would be a good trade for Montreal to be like, Hey, take him and you help us. He's your stud. We move forward with whoever at this point, it could be Allen and their young kid that they really like. Like I always felt that that was the logistic or logical Mm -hmm. out. Um, But now I'm thinking it might not be, but I also think it's then or never. Are yeah. you committed to spending the rest nine nine years, seven years, whatever with Price, or do you want to bite the bullet, let him go to Seattle, and they're not going not to have that commitment? I don't think so anymore, but I would strongly consider it because I don't think goalies have shelf lives like that anymore. Maybe yeah, especially at that pay. But just wanted to touch on Montreal. So they've got Tatar, Dano, and Gallagher as line one. The Foley, Suzuki, and Josh Anderson as line two. Drouin, Kotkaniemi, and Armia as line three. Paul Byron, Ryan Poiling, and Arturi Lekkonen as their fourth line. And they've got Sherratt and Weber, Kulak and Petrie, Edmondson, Romanoff, and then they've got Jolson as well, or Jolson. So like, that, that's that's some depth right there. But yep. I, I like them a lot. But at the same time, I have Montreal, Edmonton, and Vancouver in the same tier after saying all of that. Montreal, because... Vancouver, Edmonton, not Calgary? See, I struggled with all five of those teams, Montreal, Edmonton, Vancouver, Calgary, and Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. I think each one of them has their own glaring weakness, which makes it hard to pick which one will actually be standing there when the dust settles. But I think Montreal is the best team. I think Edmonton has the best players without a doubt. I think Koskinen's going to be sneaky this year. I think he's going to put up a good season, and I think that's what's going to get them into the playoffs. Vancouver, I believe the hype as well. They've got a lot of young talent, but I do believe they've got a couple – problems they need to fix before they can really take that next step and mm-hmm. that's that heavy expensive guys like the Biega or not the Biegas the Beagles um, Roussels the yeah. Beagles and the uh their defense Erickson. is a little suspect too the depth of it they're losing okay. Chris Tanev is a big yeah but you got Schmidt and Yule Levy's coming up hopefully yeah Myers is solid yeah fair enough fair enough they'll be okay and I like—I mean, their their goalie. We you got long term. I don't know what's going to happen in that. I like both Holpe and Demko. Um, they're not both going to be there long term. But... Uh, they would have had to overpay for Markstrom, and I'm yeah, glad and I'm glad they didn't. That's why I like Calgary because Calgary hasn't had that dependable goalie since Kippersoft. Like Calgary's identity has always been physical and goalie. Jerome Gamma and Mika Kippersoft. Did I talk? nobody now it's markstrom right so like they've solidified that they, they're back to their identity which i think is going to help them but we've talked about gujo we've talked about monahan the top lines like i don't know about their scoring yeah, especially when this division is high scoring yeah. that's what scares me about them winnipeg their defense just i don't think hellebuck's going to have the same year uh, i think that may have been his career year or one of them um i think he's going to regress a little bit i think some of their defense had good better years i think that a lot of it was you know truba turned our back his back on us and bufflin turned his back on us who are we are we just going to sit here and take it or are we going to stand up and prove that we don't need them like i think there's a lot of that in the team yeah there's a lot of people against them from the get-go last year and i think and the lining distractions yeah yeah yeah. and i just it's hard to do that two years in a row no but I heard if he does ever return, it will only ever be to Minnesota. So mm. I, I don't know if Minnesota is relevant. Maybe he signs midseason. Who knows? But at the yeah. same time, a big boy that wasn't known for his speed, agility, and conditioning hasn't played for two years. Yeah, man. If he's going as forward, maybe. But I don't think he has a career at defense anymore in the league. So Interesting. whatever, yeah. right? But so um, Who do you got coming out of this? Uh, what I finally boiled down to is I, I didn't like the warts mostly on Calgary and Winnipeg, so I kicked them out of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I have Toronto, Montreal, Edmonton, Vancouver. Okay. You've come and a long I'd way. And I say Toronto. What's that? So you've come a long way from Edmonton missing the playoffs. I just, a lot of it was I didn't, I thought their goaltenders were shit. Mm-hmm. And I still do. But when I really look at the goaltenders around the league, there's nothing. To, there's nothing stopping Koskinen from being 
what maybe not a top 10 goalie but like number 11 or number 12 mm-hmm. which would get Edmonton into the playoffs right so like he was the he had like some insane stats in the KHL which I know doesn't translate but there was like a weird stat his first year here I don't know if you followed that but Kostin was like one and nine or something in his road starts and he was like eight and two in his home starts okay. it was some like insane thing and like his goals against was like two and a half more like it no, was this too. really I remember clear... I had him on my fantasy team when he yeah and it was like just that really awkward but clear you suck away and you're good at home for whatever reason and then it disappeared after the first year right so like there's weird things like that so weird first year second year he was calm and more steady and whatever so what's not saying that he's now more settled and he can't like i mean Tal- what's his name the old guy uh smith I mean, Smith's not playing half the season. Like, he's got 20 games left, right? So, Boskinen's probably going to get the workload. So, it's put up or shut up. Plus, plus and... when you get to practice against McDavid shots, dry settle shots, all that, you're going to be better. Exactly. So, like, there's room to improve there. And for me, I just felt like it's – like you said a while back, it's hard to write off the two best players or two of the best players in the world on the same team, Mm -hmm. especially if they put them on separate lines and only use them together on the power play and stuff. They finally got Turris. Yeah, that was a huge ad. Yes, massive ad. They got Pulley Yarvi to come over, which I think is going to be a big ad. Their defense is a little weak on top of the question in net, which always scares me when both of those things are a question mark. That's always scary. But like, I just kept coming back. If Koskinen, if Koskinen has a good year, they're in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, I'll go with that. So that's why I pushed him up. And then Vancouver is a playoff-built team. I think in this type of schedule, they're going to not give away a lot of points. And I think that by when the dust settles, bring up some of the young kids, I think that they'll be fine. Yeah. I don't think they'll be amazing, but I think they'll be fine. And then I think that they'll get better from here on out if they can get rid of those contracts. But I'd have Toronto over Vancouver – um montreal over edmonton so i'd have toronto versus montreal uh in the northern division and i'd have toronto taking it in seven games let's see i have toronto against edmonton uh but toronto taking it which feels wrong but i'm gonna say it anyway it feels wrong to say feels wrong so we both have toronto i guess so Jeez, you've come a long way (laughs) 